untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Red Black Midrange, the premier midrange deck in the format, which recently got a nice boost with Kalatas Traitor of Get, included in the latest Explorer Anthology expansion, a 3-4 legendary vampire warrior with a lifelink, saying if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile that card and create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. You can also pay 2 and a black to sacrifice another vampire or zombie to put 2 plus one plus one counters on Kalatas, which can also benefit from the extra life link of course. So Kalitas is great in a removal heavy deck like this one where we're killing a ton of creatures to then farm those zombie tokens. Also shines against the red black sacrifice decks for instance where we can maybe exile a cat instead of it coming back over and over again. So it has a ton of utility and can help gain life against the burn decks as well. So just a great card to have access to. Then looking at the rest of our deck of course a mid-range deck needs to have access to some cheap interaction and Thoughtseize gives us some one mana hand disruption. We've got Fatal Push as the premier removal spell at one mana can pretty easily enable revolt to kill larger creatures thanks to the many treasure tokens and blood tokens in the deck. We also have some additional one mana removal with blood chiefs thirst and strangle and then at two mana we can count on the stomp from bonecrusher giant also nice 4-3 creature afterwards. Harvester is a 3-2 that can apply a bit of pressure, making a blood token when it enters, can also use it as removal, and then the blood token gives us a bit of card selection to maybe discard useless cards in certain matchups, maybe the opponent's empty-handed and we can get rid of a thought seize with it, and then we've got some more removal with two copies of Heartless Act, and two copies of Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which can make the opponent discard and we can eventually escape it out of the graveyard, and our deck goes through a lot of cards, especially thanks to the help from a Fable of the Mirror Breakers second chance after, so we can quickly enable Croxa and have access to a 6-6 that makes the opponent a discard when it attacks. Then at 3 mana we've got the full set of Graveyard Trespasser, a recent addition from Innistrad, which has been a staple in this deck ever since, as a source of Graveyard Hate and Life Gain, also a 2 for 1 if the opponent wants to get rid of it with Spot Removal, and then can transform in the Graveyard Glutton which can exile even more cards and gain us more life and deal more damage. Then Fable of the Mirror Breaker, another great staple in this deck, as it can combine very nicely with the Blood Tithe Harvester. Once we get the Reflection of Kiki Jiki going, we can copy the Harvester and basically kill the opponent's creatures over and over again. And then also a nice source of card advantage and extra mana with the Goblin Shaman, as we can easily clear a path for it thanks to all the removal spells. And then a Colagon's Command as a one-off can maybe destroy artifacts like Witch's Oven and can also just be two damage, maybe get back a creature or make the opponent discard. So always a nice two for one. And then topping off our curve, besides Kalitas, we also have a few Planeswalkers to help diversify our threats against control decks. With one copy of Sorin, can make a flying life-linking vampire, which can technically be sacrificed to Kalitas as well, but that doesn't come up very often. Usually just interested in plussing Sorin to provide more card advantage. And then Chandra is another amazing Planeswalker, which can come down and deal 4 damage to a creature, and then maybe start plussing, generating extra mana and card advantage or damage with the author plus 1. And then the emblem is also quite attainable, which can also take out the opponent very quickly. And then our mana base also has a few goodies with our creature lands, Den of the Bugbear and two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant, as more graveyard hate which can be useful against the Grease Fang Parhelion decks in the format. We've got one castle to provide extra cards, and then a few channel lands with the Abandoned Mire and Crucible of Defiance to make a few 1-1 tokens. And then of course a ton of dual lands with a Pathway, Blood Crypt and Haunted Ridge. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Double Thought Seize to shred our opponent's hand to pieces. Fable can maybe get rid of our removal spells if they're not good in the matchup. Let's see what we're up against. A life gain deck, okay. Harvester is useful too, so probably play that next turn. And have a look with Thought Seize, maybe take a powerful 3-drop or a Collected Company. Now our opponent's pretty far from casting it, so we can probably still snipe company with our second Thoughtseize. And then for now either take Jada or Resplendent Angel. I guess Jada we can potentially kill with Harvester. So maybe there's also an argument for Bishop. Especially with Bishop curving into Resplendent Angel with Speaker. They could make an Angel token right away. So let's see, opponent next turn plays Jada, I play Harvester. Then Resplendent Angel could be awkward. And then it could also enter with counter so we don't kill it with Heartless Act. 
So there's a lot to consider here. Maybe I should just take the Resplendent Angel and call it a day. And Bishop we can still kill with a Fatal Push. Right, go ahead and place Bishop first. So I'm kind of liking Harvester. Which can block Speaker. And maybe next turn kill Jada. And then we can wait on Thoughtseize if they're going to miss their land drop. Opponent is at 25, so Speaker is also close to being active. What if I kill Bishop, attack with Harvester to pressure their life total? Then they might trade for Jana in hopes of activating Speaker. Although it's unlikely for them to do that next turn, as it'll only go up to 26. And then we have a turn to kill it. That might not be a bad idea, because I also don't want my opponent making a bunch of spirit tokens with Bishop. Could straight up just kill Speaker. Which is certainly an option too. Or I can kill Jada and then next turn kill Speaker. Maybe that's just a safer play here, since we're also losing quite a bit of life, so the attack from Jana is going to start adding up. And it's unlikely for the opponent to just gain life next turn randomly to activate Speaker. And then next turn, can maybe kill the Speaker and Thought sees away a company. And do I want to activate my blood token for any reason? Could put Crocs in the graveyard, although I think I'm happy enough casting it. Stomp's not bad either. Alright, so we'll stomp Speaker. And then can have a look with Thoughtseize first. Opponent holding a Skyclave, which we don't really care about. Resplendent Angel's a little scarier. Although I can still kill it with Heartless Acts. Especially if we uh, stomp Speaker of the Heavens. So I think we still take Company as the biggest long-term problem. And then we'll pass it back. And kill Speaker before they get to gain one more life. Okay, Trespasser is not bad either. We can either get that going, or Fable. I think I prefer both over Croxa. Even though next turn they can play Resplendent Angel, we can easily kill it. The only problem is their opponent gaining 4 and potentially enabling future synergies like the uh, Valkyrie. But um, yeah, Trespasser can start pressuring their life total a little bit too. And gaining a bit of life back. Fable can improve my hands and sort of enable Croxa as well. So we can maybe just escape it right away. So both are fine options. Kind of liking Fable over Trespasser, but it's close. Also because the opponent cannot exile the token with Apparition. Not that they're likely to want to exile Trespasser. And if the Apparition exile Fable, I'm not too upset. The only drawback of killing Angel with Bishop in place is that he'll get a 1-1 Spirit. But the extra mana from the Shaman could also come in handy. Right, opponent's got a fourth line, still no green mana. Also have to watch out for cave eventually. Right, it's gonna be a skyclave going for reflection. Okay, so we can empty out their hand with Croxa. And then either Trespasser or Heartless Acts, depending on what we prefer. So I guess we can start by Attacking. Fine if the opponent blocks with Bishop, they might play around another Stomp from Bonecrusher. And if they trade, that's also acceptable. So now we just want to try and turn the corner as quickly as possible, pressure their life total so the cave doesn't turn into a problem. And I think getting a Croxa out there is probably the best idea. Our opponent takes it, so we'll Croxa play Trespasser. Uh, 
and grab a creature here. Okay, so we're in pretty decent shape, although another Resplendent Angel off the top. Back up to 27. At least they're still far from activating Resplendent Angel. And a Fatal Push means we can first kill Bishop, and then kill Resplendent Angel to avoid giving them any sort of uh, tokens. So let's see, how many cards in Graveyard? Five. Could also Fatal Push and then escape Croxa, which I also don't hate. Although it requires us to attack with our Shaman, which would then die to a Resplendent Angel. So maybe we'll just wait on Croxa for one more turn. Attack. And then next turn we can escape. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Opponent's playing Yurion as companion, so it could be control, in which case Fatal Push is not going to be very effective. So let's mulligan this hand. This is better. And let's probably get rid of one Harvester. Our deck does have quite a bit of spot removal, which... Is not what you want in this particular matchup, Strangle being one of those, although at least can damage Planeswalkers as well. Hoping to curve out here, Trespasser into Chandra, at least a permanent that's a little harder for the opponent to deal with, assuming it resolves. Portable Hole Exiles Harvester. Now I don't feel as bad running out Trespasser into potential Supreme Verdict. Kalitas also not very good in the matchup. Just a 3-4 lifelink. So yeah, our entire game plan revolves around resolving a Chandra. But they could have an Absorb in hand. Alright, at least we transformed our Trespasser. And what we could try here is playing a Kalitas and then basically have our opponent tap out for Supreme Verdict and then resolve Chandra. The alternative would be maybe sacking the Blood Token to go digging, but I'm not sure what we're hoping to find. So I'll go with Kalitas here. You could also be tempted to just counter it if they don't have a Supreme Verdict, but if they have a Counterspell and a Verdict, this is probably our best chance to resolve a Chandra. Alright, never mind. March for X equals 4. And they got rid of a Dovin's Veto, which would have been a cheap answer to Chandra. Another Trespasser, so let's keep up the pressure here. Could see Wandering Emperor, Exile, Trespasser, but it's still gonna cost them an extra card with Ward. Okay. So now maybe just play another Trespasser. And basically run the same play as last time, except now they could potentially go Verdict and have a Dovin's Veto available for Chandra, which is a concern. And then end of turn I might end up discarding Strangle if it doesn't look good. Opponent draws with Deluge. Hoping to dodge Verdict now. Ooh, farewell instead. Well, I'll use my Blood Token now. Strangle can go. Although opponent wasn't exiling artifacts because of Portable Hole, of course. Chandra, make mana, play Fable looks good. Yep. You're going down. Still have a Hive that can maybe exile the Deluge. So we're attacking from a few different angles. Switches back to Knights. Can discard Swamp. And another Trespasser. 
So don't quite have the mana to activate Hive and play Trespasser with a Chandra mana. So then I might just exile the top card instead. I guess never mind, we did have the mana thanks to the Shaman if it got to attack. So maybe that was still the play, but uh... Yeah, now I think I'm happy attacking, playing Trespasser. Still having Stomp available. Ah, there's a Wandering Emperor, that's fine. Might just make a Samurai token, in which case we can Stomp the token, but if they minus then I probably prefer just killing the Wandering Emperor. We still got the treasure token at least. That works. See you later. And then Trespasser exiles Deluge and uh, Emperor, sure. Okay, so we've got a Chandra on 6 loyalty, Fable about to transform, and a Glutton and Hive to keep up the pressure. So I'm not hitting our position, but you never know here. Going on passes once again, Crocs on all the bad draw. So now we have to watch out for potential Supreme Verdicts. Don't necessarily want to overextend into it, but Glutton can attack. Question is whether we attack with a Hive and expose it to removal. I think I'm just gonna exile top card with Chandra and then probably attack after. Fable, I guess we can play. And then still Croxa. No creatures in my graveyard to exile. Although we probably wanted to keep those anyway for Croxa's escape. Bowen gets rid of a portable hole. So very likely to see a Supreme Verdict, but if that's their play next turn, I can emblem a Chandra, and that's probably going to be too much for them to handle. So they would need an answer to Chandra as well. Depopulates, fair enough. Field of Ruin deals with Hive, but I'm gonna emblem Chandra. Harvester I'll keep as just a spell we can play to trigger the emblem. And hope there's no counter spell to counter triggered abilities here. Okay, Harvester, deal five. Bone Crusher deal 5, and that's game. Well, we said it at the start, it's all about Chandra. We found a window to resolve it, and it carried us to victory. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is acceptable. We'll need to hit a couple more land drops along the way. But plenty of interaction to start out. Opponent on a Plains and Speaker, so another life gain deck. Okay, let's have a look with Thoughtseize. Probably take a Company if they have one. They don't, but a selection of some scary 3-mana Angels. Probably go for Righteous, which is um, the one that could have the most immediate impact on the board. Could also take their only 2-drop and throw off their Curve. Since I do have double Heartless Act and Chandra to deal with all the three mana creatures eventually, don't hate that. Because it will also make it so they might not be able to pressure Chandra as much with a Valkyrie. Sometimes Thoughtseize takes the most powerful card, sometimes it can take the opponent off curving out, which is sometimes more valuable. So play Trespasser, stop the speaker from attacking, and now we can actually apply pressure while killing the opponent's stuff, or maybe protect our Chandra and keep the Trespasser back. 
So Valkyrie, probably gonna be our first victim of Chandra. And that makes sense to keep Trespasser back and hope they don't have a Skyclave Apparition to exile it. But if they do, it's still a nice 2 for 1. The card we don't want to see is Collected Company, which would be a 2 for 1 in the opponent's favor, most likely. Ah, just a Resplendent Angel for now. And a Kalitas, an awesome draw. So how do we feel about plussing for mana? Playing Kalitas, and then Heartless Act, exiling Resplendent Angel. Giving us a zombie in the process. Bit of a number with a Trespasser, but that's okay here. And now Kalitas is ready to take over the game against a deck that typically doesn't have much interaction. Stomp can kill Speaker, make another zombie. If we want to, we can put counters on Kalitas, but just on the off chance that they find an apparition, it's probably not necessary. Fatal push, another great draw. So I can actually enable Revolt by sacking the zombie to Kalitas, which is kind of cute. So let's try that. Maybe stomp first on speaker, so I can attack with a zombie that's in play. Just trying to optimize as much as possible. This feels satisfying. Not gonna exile anything, and our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, hand seems fine. Two removal spells and a Croxa. Hopefully find Fable of the Mirror Breaker, for instance. Chandra's not bad either. Opponent with a Shipwreck Marsh, maybe an Esper Greasefang deck. So in that case we want to find our Graveyard Trespasser and speak of the Devil. So, great curve so far. Opponent's gonna two for one themselves to kill Trespasser. And then hopefully resolve a Chandra next turn. Interesting. Into the story, so opponent maybe a blue black rogues deck. Which, if they're trying to mill us, it's nice to have a Croxa in the graveyard to escape. So, we'll tap out for Chandra, see if that gets countered. It does not. Just deal two damage for now. Polygon's command would have been sweet too. And then we've got a Heartless Sack to kill Hive. Um, and then I can still play Fable. So I think we just plus dealing 2 damage since I don't need the mana. Find a Thought Seize, that's probably worth playing even though it means I wouldn't be able to Fable keep up Heartless Act. Opponent's gonna counter with Drown. So how much do we care about our opponents activating Hive? It also exiles Croxa, so it would be pretty bad. So let's just keep up Heartless Act here. If we didn't have a Croxa in the graveyard, I maybe wouldn't care. But yeah, this is probably game over. Still have a Chandra in play, a Croxa in the graveyard. And can play a Fable now too. So let's add some mana. Play Fable and Trespasser. And then Fable's great at enabling Croxa as well. And could also exile my own stuff, but given the Croxa we probably don't want to. But it is a way to potentially shut down a Drowned, for instance. Okay. Chandra can ultimate, and that's probably game over. I am Unless they've got a disallow, they don't. Okay, let's attack. Burn. 
even have the mana to double spell thanks to the treasure. So all according to plan. Let us stomp first. And then it doesn't even matter if Soren gets countered, they're still gonna take five. Well, that was a quick and brutal game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Lots of cheap removal into a Chandra, which we can hopefully protect. Opponents on yet another life gain deck. They are popular today, and I'll keep up uh, Fatal Push here. Valkyrie, fine target for push. Veterans not too threatening. Can maybe stomp it next turn. Unless a Jada shows up, which we might want to kill instead. Another youthful. Okay, I guess now I'm stomping veteran. No reason for them to gain a life. And they've got a speaker as well. Okay, can get a trespasser going instead of bone crusher. Exile the veteran. And then next turn Chandra maybe kills Valkyrie. Although it will be under pressure from the overseer now. Still probably want to kill Valkyrie before it gets out of hand. Fable's not bad either. The counter on Valkyrie also makes it more difficult to kill with a uh, Heartless Act, for instance. So let's just take it out, and then... Trespasser could attack. Does mean they can kill Chandra with Speaker instead of Overseer. But uh, I think that's still worth it. Resplendent Angel, at least they're not too close to enabling, although never mind. At 6 mana they can just activate it, so desperately needs a removal spell. Kalitos is not bad, although still need to pair it with removal for it to be effective. Yeah, I guess it's still play Kalitos here instead of Fable, or we can get Fable going to give us a bit of card selection, and then hopefully next turn play Kalitos and a removal spell in the same turn. So, Trespasser can attack. Play Fable, and I think I need to play a land out, so we're more likely to be able to like play Kalitas and a removal spell alongside it. But I'll probably discard the Crucible. And yeah, opponent just going for the Resplendent activation, leaving behind an Angel token. Okay, so, moment of truth, we found a Heartless Act. I can attack with a Shaman, but then they block with Angel token, so that's no good. So I think we just keep everything as is. And then play Kalitas. Attack with Glutton, happy if they block with a 4-4 Angel. And then Heartless Act, Resplendent Angel, can maybe wait for them to pump. Opponent trades. Fine with that. And let them invest mana into pumping Resplendent Angel if that's what they want to do. So, that went well. Okay, maybe pump Kalitos now. Or I can just attack with the team as is. In case of a Skyclave exiling Kalitos. But I'm kind of liking the extra life gain. You know what, maybe we actually keep the zombie around so we can copy it with Reflection. It's 
going to be a Righteous Valkyrie. Okay. That's still manageable. Take two. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, they know Kalatos is going to take over. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Up against a Gigantha deck. Could still mean a lot of things. My hand's fine. Can maybe enable Revolt with our Blood Token at some point. Alright, Sacrifice. The Sacrifice matchup is not amazing, especially if they have a turn 1 Witch's Oven. Do have a 1 of Kolagans commands in the deck to maybe destroy it. Mayhem Devil can go. Leaving them with double Village Rites. And we'll play a Harvester. Harvester into Fable. Not a bad start. Bonus got the Rune Fable. Yeah, I guess we'll kill their token with our Harvester here and then play our own Fable. They can sack to the Oven. And then we'll still have our Blood Token to enable Revolt on Fatal Push to kill the eventual Reflection of Kiki Jiki. So they got rid of one Village Rites as they're missing creatures to sacrifice. Unlucky Witness. Okay. So definitely one land can go. Do I get rid of two lands here? Or do I get rid of a Fatal Push? Fatal Push is not amazing in the matchup, but I might need it to take out a Mayhem Devil at some point. Although we have more removal in the deck, I think one push can go. Right, found a Stomp as well, another answer to Reflection, although we don't really want to Stomp when there's a Witch's Oven they can activate and fizzle the adventure. So I guess for now we'll attack. And see what's up. Right, opponents got their own Fatal Push, that works. Could also just cast a Bone Crusher as a 4-3, although it's not going to be very impactful, so I think we pass. So what I could do is enable Revolt with our Blood Token and then Fatal Push the Reflection. And then, uh, if they use the oven, I can maybe stomp something else, although I guess there's still the village rights to worry about. So it's not that simple. So they're gonna use village rights or witch's oven. Village rights. Surin's not bad. Provide some card advantage here. I bring order to and reveal a strangle. Don't need to cast it. But uh, happy to have it. Opponents menacingly looking at our reflection, and they're gonna steal it with a claim the firstborn. Yeah, it's too bad. And sacks it to a deadly dispute instead of the oven to keep drawing. Well, at least we still have a Sorin. But now if they find Cauldron Familiar to go with double oven, it's going to be very difficult to win. Need to find another Planeswalker, maybe. Chandra would be great. For now, I guess we can send Den. Kalitas is one of the best cards in the matchup, as it's an answer to the cat and oven loop, as it would exile the cat for good. Also can be stolen by Claim the Firstborn, although could still potentially die to a fatal push. And hang on to Strangle. As an answer to a potential Mayhem Devil. 
Not her claim, at least, just stealing a 1-1. One, one. Not as bad as stealing a Bone Crusher. And another Deadly Dispute, so they're seeing a lot of cards. They'll find the Cauldron Familiar eventually. But it's gonna be a Mayhem Devil first to finish off Sorin. At least we can answer the Devil. And then a Trespasser is not a bad follow-up. Ben and Meyer can eventually get back Sorin as well. And Trespass are also a potential answer to Cauldron Familiar, although they can play around it pretty easily for the most part. Do I want to play a Bone Crusher Giant? I think I'm still fine playing the land out since we're gonna need a lot of mana if we wanna. Abandon Meyer back a Sorin and play it, for instance. But I guess we're not getting much value out of the Stomp given the double Witch's Oven, so I'll just play the 4 3 and hope they're out of Claim the Firstborn. And there's a Cauldron Familiar, so they can start that engine with double Oven, draining us twice per turn. Oof, and they have a Claim as well, Stealing Trespasser. And they could even exile Sorin if they wanted to. So we can mire it back. Gets the Harvester instead. So they get to drain us for one. Yeah, this is not going well. At least we got rid of triple claim, so there's only one left. Bone can play a Gigantha next turn as well. So it might be better off... Just getting back a Sorin and playing it here to provide more card advantage. That uh, Colligan's command would have been fun. Could also make a Vampire first to start gaining a bit of life back. And then there's no point in attacking with the Giants. I bring my own. So there's a Gigantha. And a Heartless Act, a nice answer to it. And a Thought Seize. Probably doesn't do much, but I guess it's worth a shot. Just want to get it off the top of my deck. Alright, let's kill Gigantha. And then we can send in a Den of the Bugbear as well. And Bone Crusher probably wants to hang back. Now if opponent ever finds a Mayhem Devil, we're pretty much dead. They've got a very large food supply, so we're not killing them anytime soon. Oh no, there's a Mayhem Devil off the top. Yeah, that's gonna be game over here. Yeah, it feels bad when we were close to maybe turning the corner with Sorin, which could have maybe found a Kalitas at some point to take over. But in general, the red-black sacrifice probably has a leg up over the red-black mid-range deck, as it kind of operates on a different axis that it can ignore a lot of removal spells and eventually get you with a cat oven loop, which also sort of plays around the graveyard trespasser as they can bring it back at instant speed. So that's a tricky matchup for sure. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is fine. Thought season fatal push. A nice pairing. And can kill an elf here. And take a look next turn. So opponent on a stompy deck it seems. Wouldn't be able to take the beasts, but we can push and Thoughtseize, but let's start with Thoughtseize. Maybe take away a company. 
or steel leaf as their only leftover. Okay, so what's my plan here? If I fatal push belt collector, we still don't have a great answer to the beast, although I guess I can kill the 1-1 one -one with Chandra eventually, and then the beast won't be able to attack anymore. Problem is, if I fatal push here, I might not be able to curve out properly because of Den. So maybe we play Den, let the opponent hit us for 3, play Trespasser to block Pelt Collector next turn, and then Chandra killing the 1-1 one -one can maybe stabilize us. Kalitas also great. So probably get Kalitas down first. And if they don't have a fight spell, that can take over the game. Opponent sends in... Beast and Spelt Collector, interesting. Can't think of many pump spells commonly played in the green deck, like a snakeskin veil would be a fine trade. And maybe they're just trying to set up a collected company to grow Pelt Collector, but that's still a pretty big gamble. So I think I'm fine blocking here. Alright, opponent has got a collected company. But wow, they actually missed, that's unlucky. So that's pretty painful. And now Kalitas is gonna take over. The company was still, I guess, unlikely to grow Pelt Collector twice. So do they have a fight spell? Or is Kalitas gonna take over? Take the five. Glutton transforms, and don't have a great revolt enabler for Fatal Push, but if we kill the 1-1, one -one, then the beast also can't attack, and push an answer to a Lair of the Hydra as well. So, I feel comfortable attacking. Elves can go. But also Exile Company, not that it matters. Opponent's also down to 7 in the meantime. So I could Chandra, plus 4 mana, stomp the human token and still have Fatal Push available. Sure. Could also just play Bone Crusher. I guess the one way we could lose is if the opponent has another company here end of turn. And then uh, kills us that way. But this seems fine. We'll pass. Do they have another company? They don't. A lair can be activated, but that one we can push. Opponent pumps the beast after animating Lair, so a nice play, which gets them 8 damage if it weren't for Fatal Push. And now the beast sadly can't attack, and now we get to untap, and it's pretty much attack for lethal. It's another quick dismantling of the mono green deck with an appearance of Kalitas. Opponent blocks Kalitas, we can just sank the zombie, and that's a favorable block for us. And then Chandra can deal 2 more damage, but yeah, our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand is a little painful, but keepable. Opponent on blue spirits. So they can counter a 1 mana Thoughtseize, so let's just play a tap land for now. And then next turn maybe hit them with double Thoughtseize, we'll see. Triple Thoughtseize. That is starting to add up, so this could get quite painful. But we'll start with one and see what's up. If they flash in a spirit to grow wonder and sacrifice it, I'm fine with that. Uh, snare to counter. And then sure, I guess we'll make them sack wonder, which is also quite effective against stomp anyway. Okay. And we don't have to pay any life since they countered it. Shacklegeist's perfect target for Stomp, but first we want to have a look 
<laughs> with another thought sees what is this Conan's not gonna be happy Curious obsession rattle chains yeah I've got bad news for you not gonna let them untap and risk drawing into some interaction let's just stomp here and outside of Supreme Phantom, most of their creatures die to Stomp, so I'm not too worried about Curious Obsession. Sentence Spirit's not bad, they could have leveled it up to play around Stomp, but a Fatal Push now a perfect answer as well. Okay, so what's the play here? Could take away Curious Obsession, although I don't really care. Um, kind of prefer Stomping Ascendant Spirit in response to them leveling up, as opposed to playing a Bone Crusher and having to use Fatal Push, which is more valuable, as it can kill... Supreme Phantom. Storm Spirits. And now we've got Double Bone Crusher to cross the finish line or a Trespasser. That's fine by me. Could Thought Seize first to maybe take away another counter spell and at the very least take Cure Obsession. That's all four copies of Thought Seize. Our opponent has to laugh about it too. Right, Spectral Sailors they can maybe activate, but I'll let them have it for one turn and get this Trespasser going. And opponent's likely to pass a turn with a bunch of instants up, which plays right into the day and night cycle. Colgan's Command, another great draw. So we'll attack. And exile some creatures. Well, that's how you dismantle the Mono Blue Spirits deck. Opponent activates Sailor. So I think we kill it and make them discard. There's no creatures to get back, just a full graveyard of Thoughtsea is kind of funny to see. So deal two damage, make them discard. And do it before they draw, so they don't really have a choice in the matter. And they had another Sailor in hand. Okay. Their opponent's on a quick clock. Five mana. And our opponent concedes. Well, this was another brutal game from the red-black mid-range deck. So yeah, if you enjoy interactive decks in Explorer, red-black mid-range is one of the best decks around. And it's a ton of fun to play, as you could see from these games. Lots of decisions. Quite satisfying when you can turn the corner, maybe get a Kalitas going against creature decks. But it can struggle against the more controlling decks of the format. Although even there we have tools like our various Planeswalkers and creature lands, which can still help us cross the finish line. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.